More birds. How do you possibly follow up the last week's episode? How are Mikasa and crew reacting to, like, Eren being decapitated? They can't see this internal weird Zeke world, Zeke land. Is a baby Eren? He was born fighting. Well, it's worth a look, right? To quote a great turtle, the true mind can weather all the lies and illusions without being lost. The true heart can withstand the poison of hatred without being harmed. Did I finally get that right? And from a different sort of turtle. The truth is only painful if you live a life of lies. If there's brainwashing, then it's good to know. If there's no brainwashing, then there's nothing to worry about. Take us on a journey, Zeke. A journey into the past. Yeah, Grisha got out. He did. He got out and started over. Not at all bitter. No bitterness here. Zeke, totally over it. You just hope there's something in what he's saying. Maybe there's something of value in there anyway. It's the first butterfly to make it out of Attack on Titan unscathed. <laughs> well, our work is done here, huh, Zeke? How about well? There's a parallel in that for Eren, right? Being able to throw things away for the sake of the Eldians, or at least, in this case, the island. Inner conflict? Couldn't go through with it? Yeah, Zeke's not bitter at all. <laughs> No jealousy in those eyes. Ugh. Don't you see, Aaron? Don't you see how, how terrible he was for loving you so hard? Is this a backfire? I feel like this is backfiring a little bit. This ends up being more of an expose on Zeke than it does on Grisha. Loneliness intensifies, etc. I mean, as someone who, in a very complicated show, would probably put Zeke's side as the lowest priority in my mind. Hard not to sympathize with his backstory. Though, of course, that doesn't excuse what he does from then on. <laughs> And I feel like there's something to that. I feel like that has been established. He's like a mix of a whole bunch of stuff, prior personalities. Grisha has entered the dream. Where are we right now? <laughs> it's like a weird mix of their consciousnesses, which would include Grisha, right? He's still in there. <laughs> wow. Well, this is going great. Don't you see, Aaron? Don't you see how sad I am? All I ever wanted was for father to give it his all. I never wanted to pick up a baseball. <laughs> That's Zeke's opening. Zeke's rumbling. On a serious note, though, I feel like what Zeke's going through is really emotionally resonant for me because one of the hardest things to accept is the fact that people who have done you wrong can go on to be fine, or at least they can go on to live good lives. And it's sort of like, how could that be? You know, if you're stuck with this sort of trauma from that thing, how is it fair that people who are responsible for that trauma can escape it and like live better than you're living? As a kid, when I got into fights or had rivalries at school, there was something my father used to always say, which I think is something like a tradition for fathers to say, which is something like, don't worry, in, in 10 or 15 years, that person won't be anything. They'll just be pumping gas or whatever. But that's not true. Like, <laughs> I know what happened to those people and they went on to be very successful and I think there's actually a dangerous and pervasive view of morality in there somewhere where it's like people who do bad things get bad results and people who do good things get good results and an overextension of that where the reason you do good things is to get things that's a pretty quick way to have your whole moral system unravel because people who do bad things are able to be wildly successful at least in certain objective ways and people who act very conscientiously often end up with nothing speaking of cruelties of life right and I think that is partly why people are very quick to sort of devolve into justifying their bad behavior because if these people who I deem to be terrible are getting all these great things that they want what the hell is the point of being good you know it's missing that extra layer of connection to trying to be a good person for me what's a stronger starting point is more like I have this code of conduct because this is who I want to be and I understand the effects of not being this way to the point where the consequences of that are sort of secondary. I just think that a very common way we talk about and practice morality is less about reflection and more about towing the lines that have been set out for you and thinking that's goodness when really a lot of times it's just sort of being ineffectual. And I think the sooner one can separate one's own code of conduct from anticipated rewards of that con 
conduct besides just the internal gratification it provides, the better, because otherwise you get stuck like Zeke, you know, who's been carrying the baggage of his father for decades, while Grisha, although he's still carrying the weight in some level, sort of moved on in what I would say is a healthy way. And there's also the hidden fact of no matter how successful people are objectively, by doing wrong, they've been punished in a different way, which is just their own soul, their own reflection on who they are, and the fact that they have to carry that memory with them forever, like Grisha obviously does with Zeke. Grisha was a terrible father and was a terrible input in Zeke's life, like everyone has terrible inputs in life that cause trauma, but then, you know, part of the journey into adulthood, let's call it, is the reevaluating of those events and taking responsibility for one's own viewpoint in those events. That's the only way, in my opinion, to sort of get out of this situation where Zeke's just stuck. He's stuck in childhood. It's got to be incredibly painful to watch Grisha live a life. It's got to be incredibly painful to watch Aaron. And come to think of it, he's got this thing where he, he's all about helping his little brother. Part of that is jealousy. Part of that is like, you want to get close to the thing you hate. You know what I mean? If you have an enemy, there's a weird and dual instinct between destroying the enemy and getting close to them, you know, being in their, their glow. And he went. <laughs> Whoa. If I play baseball. I was just thinking today about how, what a missed opportunity it was to not have Colossal Irwin. Oh well. Memories of the future. Memories of the future? Memories of the future. Cycle. Cycle intensifies. Rumbling. Yeah, there's this question of like how authentic Aaron actually is, how much he's been influenced by his past personalities, but I feel like at this point, he's come to it on his own. This ended up being so key. This Mikasa flashback thing. Right, right. Some validation there. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. It does feel that way. Unless, cycle. Maybe by rescuing Aaron, Zeke was really hoping to rescue himself. Yeah, I mean, he, he definitely formed an identity in reaction to the trauma he experienced. Just like he was abandoned. Right. Yeah, the more this goes on, the more I think this is like... Zeke just in a weird way to resolve his inner conflict. You find people like this, like, it's way more common than it might appear at first glance. Like, people just carry this stuff. They just carry this stuff with them their whole lives because they don't know they can go back and look at it again and realize it's not them. You build up these walls to protect you, but over time, those walls become the same things that trap you? That's a little bit too on the nose. Yeah, it only took me three and two final seasons to come around to the emotional meaning of the walls. And in season one, your mommy ate my mommy. Chris is just sort of here. <laughs> He's around for these flashbacks. You could say that. Make sure you learn how to read in the meantime. So a lot of birds recently. Like a lot of them. Yeah, time to check up on these children. Ugh. Can't even look at Rod Rice. It's probably a more human plea than Zeke was expecting. Great job. You did a great job with that. It's not too different from Zeke. Right. そして父親に深く失望した。あれも嘘だったの。私の家は破壊された壁のすぐそばにあり。Aaron's locked in. Great job with that. We're does this have an influence at all? I mean, it's hard to know what exactly is happening. Yeah, there's that weird thing. Why do I feel like something's different? Why do I feel like their being here is going to influence things? 
Oh, give it some time. <laughs> Here we go. It was... It was Aaron. Memories of the future. This is weird because it's going to take a while for it to process, but it's simultaneously confusing and makes perfect sense at the same time. I feel like this is one of those things where the significance is going to gradually hit me increasingly the more I think about it. But Aaron is sort of outside time here, which one makes it seem like all Aaron's initiative in a way, but also that there's some future Aaron that has a lot of power over all Aaron's, perhaps. I mean, maybe it's unique to being in this space, but wouldn't future Aaron, some sort of final iteration of Aaron, be able to manipulate the whole thing start to finish? Assuming he ends this with the founder's powers. Aaron was using Zeke, who was using Aaron, who is now using Zeke. Well, I can't fully grasp it yet. I know it's been there. This has been there from the beginning. The fact that there's a weird, maybe not even a cycle, but something outside of the flow of normal time. Whose hand was that? Was that Historia? How's this flashback going, Zeke? This retrospective into how terrible Grisha was. Got a little bit more than he bargained for. Aaron, in a way, Gave the Titan power to himself. <laughs> when your son becomes a timeless spirit. I'm sure Carla will be fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm with Zeke on this one. <laughs> It definitely seems that way. Not a huge surprise there. Oh my god. <laughs> this is what Zeke wanted. This is everything Zeke wanted. This is so bizarre on so many levels. It's like a weird mercy on Aaron's part, too, no? Is this the end of Zeke's arc? No! What in the... Well, that was very different from the last episode, but still very intense. Just, like, introspectively intense and mythology plot intense. It was Madam Christmas the whole time, except it was Aaron. There's just so many questions raised by this that I, I can't fully comprehend. Like, where exactly does it begin? Did Aaron push himself to pick up the knife against Mikasa's attackers? Did he, like, back to the future it and become responsible for his own conception? <laughs> <laughs> what is Aaron exactly? What's frustrating about it is I feel like all the answers are already sort of there. If I was only smart enough to grasp it, it's usually threatening because to me I feel like it suggests that Aaron is, has already done what he wants to do and it's terrible, as Grisha said. And how would you even fight that if he's the only person outside of time? Also, for reasons I can't really put my finger on, I feel like he already had more power than he's letting on. I feel like there was something significant about his interaction with Historia that I didn't get. Though at this point, I'm just pulling things out of my ass. It's amazing and hilarious. I was talking to a friend of mine about the show right before I started watching this episode. And he asked me about my thoughts on Aaron in season four. And I said something about the fact that Aaron's goal and motives are sort of unclear or not totally clear, but that there's someone I'm rooting against more, which makes it easier to side with Aaron in certain things. But I feel like that just got flipped on its head. I feel like that was sort of the the ending of a very important arc, if not the whole arc for Zeke, because one thing that's been very clear about his character that this episode really, really highlighted was the fact that he's sort of stuck in the past, and a lot of his actions come not from, you know, real desire to seek a solution, but from his pain. His desire to bond with and perhaps save Eren feels to me now like an attempt to be bonded with and to save himself or to find some kind of emotional validation that he's been looking for his entire life due to his relationship with his father and all the turmoil of his youth. But that seems to have been settled in a large way by that Grisha encounter. But also it feels too late. It feels like Eren has been in control this whole time. That Zeke having power thing last episode was kind of a fake out in a way. A separate thing to throw in here that I was thinking about this episode was one thing that came up a lot in comments during season three and four about my viewpoint on the show was that I was siding with the the king or the king's line where the solution is just total lockdown and refusal to fight. But I think after watching this episode, I can more solidly state that that's not my side because this total capitulation to just being wiped out is also not a solution. Also the fact that they use ignorance as their primary tool of keeping people in line with what they want. That's antithetical to a lot of my beliefs about letting people make their own choices. There's a really big gap in my mind with a lot of options in between this common thing in the show of, well, they struck first, so wipe them all out and the race or maybe even Zeke side of it where it's like, yeah, we just suck. The only way through this is to be annihilated. There are a lot of points 
dance in between those two extremes. It was oddly terrifying in a different sort of way to hear them talk about and accept just their annihilation and how much they deserved it and how the innocent people of the island deserve it by nature of their birth. It's not that different from the, the Marleans even in a way. This final, final season, which may not even be the final season, I've heard, is really something else. <laughs> they just keep ramping it up. How high can we go? Last thought. One thing I'm sort of expecting is that Zeke can die by Aaron's hand, but I feel like there's something unsatisfying about that because it's being set up for Levi, no? There's like a, a rule of threes thing happening or, or whatever where Levi let Zeke live twice, right? Was it already three times? With cataclysmic results. Levi is still lurking out there, and I feel like it would be satisfying if Zeke's end is at Levi's hand, but who knows?